It's magical. I love this place. Wildlife and Ta -da! wild men are drawn to this place. Here I am. A little over a hundred years ago, this place didn't even exist before it became an exclusive resort. All these movie stars came out here. But now no one is excluded. Because it's the last free place on the planet. You don't have to pay any rent or anything else like that. It draws artists and eccentrics. You're a little crazy, aren't you? No, I'm bananas. People seeking salvation or nature. Well, there's over 400 different kinds of birds. Some of the residents are mysterious. Let's not go there. Huh? 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 And yet, most people on this planet know little about this place. They don't seem to, to know what it is, where it is, or anything about it. This is the biggest body water we have in California, for heaven's sakes. And it's all about to disappear. I love this place, this place, this place, this place, this place. Well, we're down at the Salton Sea. This place. So it's like uh, 15 miles across, about 35 miles long. It's a biblical sea. Now it's about 50% saltier than the ocean. In the middle of a Southern California desert. It's a diamond in the rough. Literally. And when the sea starts to sparkle, it looks like diamonds. And sometimes you get to see mirages. You can see a flight of birds going over right now. It's, it's special. Linda Beale is a local. The beauty, the sunrises, sunsets here. I was just lucky to be born here. Yeah, but Linda was born not long after the birth of this place. Now here's the amazing thing. This, all of this, for all of its natural beauty, is actually man-made. Except man didn't even mean to make it. At the turn of the last century, some engineers built a series of irrigation canals from the Colorado River in an attempt to turn desert into farmland. And they didn't really engineer it correctly, and it just came flowing through. All this is below sea level, so the water rushed in and stayed. Well, of course, they thought it would dry up, you know, but... With it didn't. And after several evaporation cycles, it became salty and grew to cover an area larger than Lake Tahoe, at the time California's largest lake. It was a disaster. But then, a curiosity. That this huge sea is in the middle of the desert. Oh, well, it's interesting. Ben Beal, Linda's father, met her mother during the Second World War when he visited what became known as the Great Salton Sea. By then, someone thought to turn lemons into lemonade, where once was a desert, suddenly... There were thousands of people around. It was crowded. There were resorts. A famed architect designed a modern yacht club. There were boat races, water skiing. Frank Sinatra, the Rat Pack, all the movie stars came down there. But by the 1970s, the Salton Sea's popularity and its waters began to recede. The resorts crumbled, the pleasure seekers left. But it's still an attraction. There's a lot of people that come out here for the dry weather and everything, for their health out to the desert. And um, of course there was that area there, Slab City, that was a great place to land, you know. Why do they call it Slab City? It's because this one used to be an old military base during World War II. It's on the eastern shore of the Salton Sea, the same place Linda's dad served. But the Marines shipped out a long time ago. And all that was left were slabs. Eventually, people like Danny moved here to be in a warm, dry place. But most times people come out here because it's free. Because it's the last free place on the planet. That's Bald Mike. Very few people in Slab City give their last names, by the way. He, like thousands of others in Slab City, simply parked their RVs on the slabs and stayed. <laughs> because there's no such thing as a landlord. It costs nothing to live here. Bald Mike took us to meet... They call me Bunker Dave. Bunker Dave says he was once wealthy. What did you do before? You said you made a lot of money. What was your career? No, let's not go there. Anyway, the Great Recession hit in 2008. Everything crashed. Finance, friends, family. So he found comfort at the bottom. Ta-da! Here I am. Below sea level. Do you ever get bored out here? Sometimes. No, there's people like you that come around asking questions. Since I got a TV, I want to get bored half the time. Danny has satellite TV. Bunker Dave has his clarinet. and other people have their muse to amuse them. 
artists express themselves. Before he died, an artist named Leonard Knight made a shrine to his Christian faith out of some straw, mud, and paint. Lots of mud, straw, and paint. Salvation Mountain is now a bona fide tourist attraction. In many ways, Slab City is like any other city. There's a church, a library. Any community has its little quirks, okay? Hmm? Hmm? What? What? On the other end of the sea, next to a liquor store, is Fred Garbett's International Banana Museum. I have over 20,000 banana-related items and pictures. Are a lot of bananas grown around here? No. But that didn't stop Fred from creating what the Guinness Record people say is the largest collection of banana-themed items. Any other fruit museum would just be wrong. Banana earrings, banana letter opener, banana ashtrays, banana necklaces, bananas, metal bananas. Oh yeah, they're banana-flavored condom. Uh, banana pencil sharpener, banana scissors, banana hair. Is there something Freudian going on with you and bananas? A Freudian slip? <laughs> banana wind-up toys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fred also serves up icy banana treats. I'm shoving a spoon into a blender. I like to live dangerously. Banana shakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nah? 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 I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Banana splits. I use finely diced walnuts. La 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 la. Chocolate covered bananas. Mm. Oh, perfect, you know what I mean? Mm. Don't you get sick of bananas? But alas. No. The Salton Sea is literally drying up. Yeah, well, the sea's going down. There's less farmland, there's a drought. And the government finally wants their water back. But if we lose the sea, I think we can lose a lot of our bird species. Already, it's shrinking year by year. I don't want to even think about it drying up. All this, the artsy squatters, the natural beauty, dry up too. Funny, this all started as a man-made disaster. It'll be a disaster if they allow it to dry up. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed The Travel Jerk and I hope you subscribe to our channel, Amazing Gravies, so you can catch all the great content, wherein we will be adding more Travel Jerk episodes to the playlist. You can also get content on Instagram, Twitter, and the Facebooks. Thank you, Internet. This is what my career has come to, sitting alone in my backyard, talking to a camera with nobody behind me.